G'day aspiring engineers. If you want to know how to make 2D drawings in Fusion 360, you know it's semi-automatic. Stick around. Welcome to Future Engineering. The future starts now. Here's Fusion 360 and here's the first part, the first of the 16 basic tutorials. Notice how the, uh, the part is orientated this way and uh, really what we want to do is um, just simply reproduce the drawing that I provided for you. This is a good, uh, a good beginner's tutorial. Alrighty, so, uh, so what we're going to do is create a drawing and the way that we do that is right click on the top of the tree on the left and choose create drawing. Notice that the create drawing dialog box opens we can have the full assembly or just what is visible, it's selected. The drawing is create new and there's an option for a template. Now I do have a template that I've created. I'll show you how to do that another day, but uh, I'm just going to use my template. It opens up and I've got a part stuck to the cursor. Now this could be uh, whichever way that you have uh, chosen. I've got the top view selected here. That's the side of the part that gives us the most information. It tells the whole story. So that'll do. Now we need to place the base view it's telling us. So I'm going to put mine a little bit over from the side because I'm going to pull out another one from here and I'll put that there. Notice that uh, we've got our part which is pretty well drawn already for us and that's why I say it's semi-automatic. So we've got the template, we've got the, the first orthogonal view and uh, that came in without us having to draw it because we've already really modelled it in 3D. That's a nice feature. Just before we go, the scale here. I like the scale, that's a good size for now. And my template is actually in the ISO system and I've got this as an A3 page. You know, that's two A4 pages. Perhaps it's a little bit bigger than the American letter. So I'll click OK and we've got the outline of the front view of our part. There's a little tool up here on the far left, Projected View. Click on that and then select the parent view. That's the one that I've already put in. And you see that there's another part stuck to the cursor. I can put one on the left, I can put one on the right. Somewhere over here will be good. And there's a little green tick when I've done that enough. And you can see that that's also an orthogonal view. It's it's no way perspective, it's completely orthogonal. Now, I can reposition these things. If you click on the view, you get this little handle that comes up here and I can move that around anywhere I like. And you notice that these two views stay perfectly lined up. That's one of the features of these orthogonal views. I can do this one too, but I can't do move that anywhere except along the line so that it's lined up with the parent view. If I try to move it up a bit, it doesn't work. All right, so that'll do. I want to have just one more view on this. Now these two views tell the whole story. All the information about the geometry is there on those two views. But I do want to have a pictorial view. So I'm going to click on this one. And uh, I don't like that one so much. Let's have a look. That one's not too bad. Ah, that's nice. I'll put that one there. Give it a green tick. I'm going to select it and then I'll move it with the handle, put it up here somewhere, select the view, then right click and choose edit view. And the reason why I want to do that is I want it to make a shaded view and I also want to change the scale. This is too big for a pictorial view. So I'm under scale here, I'm going to go for one to one. No, one to five. That's better. A pictorial view is only there to show you what the thing looks like in 3D. But the orthogonal views are 2D drawings which are surrounded by some ancient traditions and conventions. We won't go into it too deep now. But now that we've got the views all set up, I just want to point out a couple of things. You can see that uh, I've got the, uh, the logo for future engineering. I've got my name there. And this symbol here 
which I've added to the template is what we call third angle projection. Now I'm using millimeters. I've got the ISO system. This is an A3 piece of paper, which is part of the ISO system. And the third angle projection system, which is also part of the ISO simple. And it means that we have the left hand view on the left hand side. And um, I'll just illustrate that a little bit here. Here's the truncated cone. Can you see these are two orthogonal views of a truncated cone? That's the front view and that's the side view. Let's go back and have a look at that. There it is. Um, and we can have a look at the front. And we can also go and have a look at the left hand side view. All right, back to the drawing. Can you see that in the symbol here? We've got the left hand side view of the truncated cone and we've got the front view of the truncated cone. And that's what we have here. We have the, um, the parent view, the front view of this part, and we have the right hand side view of the part. Now, if you were doing the American system, you would not have the, uh, the front view here. We, you would not have the left hand side view over on the left. You'd have the left hand side view over on the right hand side. Go figure. But uh, we'll be just sticking with the ISO system here just for today. All right. So front view, right hand side view. The next thing we should do when we're creating a drawing is put in center marks and center lines. Now, center mark belongs on every every hole feature in our drawing and center lines should appear whenever there's a side view of something that's round. And so that's the top of this hole and this is the bottom of this hole. Perfectly lined up. I'm going to click on the top and then the bottom which puts the center line in between those two lines. And so that's telling me that this is a, a round feature, a hole, and it has a center mark here, and we see the center line when we're looking at it from the side view. It's a fairly simple drawing, isn't it? So let's just um, copy in these dimensions that are also on the drawing here. Here's the dimension tool up here, and we have uh, just the ordinary dimension tool, and it's pretty powerful. Click on one side of that feature and the other, put that up there. Then we click on the very top line of the model, and then the bottom, put it out to one side, and then there's this other dimension here from the halfway point, roughly half point to the bottom. Then we've got a um, another linear dimension on the thickness of the part. And there are a few fillets, so I'm going to put one out here and I'll edit that in a minute. The diameter of the hole and the radius of the fillet near that hole. One thing we need to do is let the reader know that this radius up here is one of six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hit the escape key to, to drop out of the dimension tool. And then double click on the text in the radius and you see the two caret symbols either side of the text. You want to get inside that right hand caret, hit the space bar and type in six not with lowercase but uppercase, hit the enter key and then double click on the other radius here, get the cursor inside the right hand caret, give a space and this one is a radius that is in two places. Press enter to drop out of that command. Okay, we've nearly finished, and the other thing we can do is put a couple of uh, things in the title panel. This is quite important. So uh, the title is, um, put in the document type here, it's a part drawing. I click on it, it reveals the little uh, moving handle, and I'll put that in a better position. I'm going to start another one down here. And the title of this drawing is part number one. I'm going to put a note here as well. I should have a place here to enter in the, the units and the scale. Um, I do have a place for the date. I'll put the date in first. Today's the 27th of February 2021. Put some more text up here.
just move that a little bit okay that will do for uh, for today folks this is the uh, the most simple way to set up a, a drawing in Fusion 360 this is a part drawing it shows manufacturing information for this particular part as opposed to an assembly drawing which we'll cover another day hopefully this will get you started I'll see you in the next video bye now